Hey guys, hey guys, I'm Heather, I'm Heather Cottonoy, Cottonoy, Artistic, Artistic Director, Director at John, John Paul, Paul Mitchell, Mitchell Systems, Systems. Coming, coming live from, from FSC On Demand. Tonight, Tonight I'm so excited to share with you the beautiful world of blonding. Blondes do have more fun, blondes do have more fun, but for us behind the chair, what we need to know is how we appropriately address different flavors of blonde and what we can offer to them. Tonight I'm going to be showing you the latest introduction to the Demi collection from Paul Mitchell. This is our Demi permanent hair color featured in level 10 series. All of our blondes love to stay bright and white, however they like to dabble in a few different ranges and shades. So tonight's topic is really going to be about toning and how we represent different flavors of blonde and the different avenues we would take based upon toning. On our mannequin here, what I have representing is two versions of toning. I'm applying here on the dry side of the hair first, and then we're going to approach what it would look like when we apply on the wet hair or damp hair of a blonde. As a starting canvas, you can see that this mannequin head is living at a beautiful blonde representing a level 910, and that dominant pigment at the level 910 is yellow to pale yellow. What I've already started working through this processing application is this first section of hair is saturated with the 10A and processing liquid from Paul Mitchell Demi, equal parts one to one. Scalp to ends application on the dry fabric of hair, we're really going to put a test to see how much tone is deposited and if it truly stays at that level 10. Right next to it, what we have again is a level 10, and this is our PA. That is a pearl ash. So it's a slight bit of violet with blue, natural, uh, with a natural um, base to it, so it's not going to get overpowered by that blue-violet tone. But again, really letting that take in and processing for that full 20-minute time, staying at that level 10 base. As I continue, I'm now going to show and feature here BV. On dry hair again, this is what our application is showing. So let's go through and talk about a little bit why you use to apply on dry hair versus wet hair. In some situations we know after blonding, we run into extremely gold or warm shades. So if I had a guest with extremely gold hair after lifting at that level 9, 10, I'm talking gold like popcorn butter yellow. Um, I really want to allow that natural canvas to stay in its dry phase so that the color can deposit and truly neutralize my shade. Anytime you might be working on a coarser fabric of hair, hair that has many cuticle layers tightly compacted onto that hair strand, you definitely want to allow yourself to go through and apply on a, on a dry canvas of hair. Again, there's nothing blocking that deposit. Mixing through with the processing liquid, this processing liquid is about a three and a half volume of developer. So we're slightly going in, barely lifting up that cuticle, and these color molecules are shifting past the cuticle to live on the outer surface of the cortex. Now, knowing that blondes have taken a little bit of a different road through integral surface, meaning lightener can definitely put us in a different situation with how well or how strong that blonde hair is living. So take into consideration, I would say, the integrity of blonde you're working with, determining whether you should apply on dry or damp hair. So dry hair is going to be acceptable for extremely strong of hair, um, very strong yellow or warm shades. Anytime you start moving into um, proce overly processed or damaged type of blondes, 
that's when I would revert into going through and toning on the damp hair. That water is going to be a little bit of that insurance policy. policy. Now, I know for me and some of my hairdresser friends out there, when we've been working through with the demi, this oxidation process can be quite tricky and scared us, making us a little timid to see if we should rinse or keep it going. Notice again, this is our 10A from the demi. This is our 10PA, that's our pearl ash, and I'm going through and applying our 10BV, that blue-violet base right from the scalps into the ends. Now, why I choose to apply to the scalp first and I leave those ends dry is oftentimes when we're working with blondes and we're toning, the ends tend to be a little more porous. So I don't really need as much processing time to allow those ends to take in that tonal shade or color. Also, by a base first and working it into my ends, I can really use my hands to massage the color into the hair and expedite my application time. So you can see that base is all saturated. Now we're going to come through and get the mids to end saturated, working a side to side motion and using my hand again to really massage in that color. So this is our blue violet base. Again, tonight's technique is really to show you the different tonal values that we offer here in the Demi Level 10 series. So I wouldn't necessarily do this actual technique on my guest. We're here to really learn and see how we can specialize in the toning situations of a blonde. Now that I have that nice and saturated, I'm just going to give myself a little color dread here to isolate and keep each tonal base uh, separated from each other. And we'll really get to see as this process is the, how we're seeing that hair um, oxidize and what tonal base is really going to come to life. The last and final shade that we have to offer in the Level 10 series is our 10V. This is our violet base. So I'm going to be applying that again. We're focusing on the drier canvas of hair and why we would choose to apply on a dry canvas in this situation would be to eliminate how strong the blonde is showing us. Right here we can see it's a beautiful level 910. We know at a level 910 that that dominant pigment is yellow to pale yellow. So when we have a yellow based color, we know that we must use violet right? Violet's going to help to neutralize and cool that shade out. So this is our 10V. You can see that it's pretty strong to the eye in our application. Oftentimes when we're working through and we see something like this, I know for myself and some of us out there, we get a little intimidated and we think we must rinse it, rinse it off right away because we don't want that hair to pick up violet. We want it to neutralize. Well, one thing that to celebrate here tonight with the Demi, especially in the intensely cools, is trusting the process, trusting the product, and allowing the hair to give time to really take in that pigment to have a nice neutralization. Oftentimes when we shampoo or rinse the hair too soon, because we see it processing and it's violet and it does look a little scary, what happens is the tone of that blonde looks great today in the salon, maybe even tomorrow, but after a week or so, that yellow and that warmth tends to trickle back through on the hair. So you really need to allow that full processing time so that that pigment gets where it needs to be to neutralize that hair that was lifted in the service. So as I'm working through in my application, oftentimes you have to be aware of the porosity of hair. So I'm applying on scalp to about mid, out mid area. And then lastly, I'll apply onto the ends of the hair, being that those tend to be a little more porous than usual and that I can have a little um, insurance or a, a little safety guard when I'm coming through in my application. If you've ever experienced your toner when you apply scalp to ends or you apply on half of the head and you get going on the other half and realize the first half you started is already turning uh, violet or silver based upon the toner you have chose, what I would recommend and suggest is you move into smaller entities of applying your toner. I myself like to call this patchwork. So if you know that it does take you a little longer in your application of toning 
or that that hair tends to be a little more porous and grab onto that toning, what I'd suggest is to section out the head of hair into four quadrants and tone one quadrant at a time. This will really allow you to apply in that quadrant inspect the deposit and the neutralization that is happening. And once you've gotten where you need to be, oftentimes with blondes or even brighter blondes than what we're working with on the mannequin, the toning process happens within moments. And I'm talking two, five, six minutes. So you can work that in one panel and then continue into another panel or quadrant to have a little bit more of an even distribution of deposit when working through and toning your blondes. So I have that saturated onto the root area. Now we're gonna come through and work this into the ends of the hair. On this half of the head, you can see that we have four different flavors of our level 10 series coming through from the Demi. And this half of the experience is to really show us what these shades can do when we apply to the dry canvas of hair. That's important to know because sometimes after the lifting process, you might be exposed to extremely warm shades of a blonde. It's screaming yellow. You have a very predominant yellow base. So what you'd need to do is go through and apply on a drier fabric to allow that pigment and that color to really get in and do its job as far as neutralizing or cooling out your shade. So as a recap on this side, what I have, this is the Intensely Cools Level 10 Series from the Demi, Paul Mitchell Demi Permanent Hair Color. And on the dry fabric of hair, what we started off with was in the front area, this is our 10A. Scalp to ends with processing liquid. You can see it's starting to get nice and cool. In my eye right now, I'm almost thinking, wow, that could get deeper than a level 10. We're gonna really put the, put the situation to the test tonight, which I'm sure you're gonna be satisfied with. Right next to this here, this is our TA. This is a pearl ash. So you can see a little bit more of that cooler shade. This has a little combination of a blue-violet controlled with a natural. Um, so it's gonna give you a little bit more of a smoky end result into your level 10. Right next to that, this is our 10 BV. This is our blue violet base here at a level 10. I've just finished processing and applying this, so it's gonna need a few minutes to really come to life in its oxidation. And right behind that here, you can see our level 10 V. This is our violet base here. So any of those guests who are really screaming yellow that have that strong underlying tone of that dominant pigment, violet would be the way to go when you're looking to neutralize. So that half of the head is featuring and showing our application on a dry canvas. Why again, you'd wanna choose a dry canvas. If your lifting process is very strong in its yellow phase, or if you have a very strong integrity of hair, very healthy head of hair that you don't wanna apply any water on when you're toning. Water tends to resist a little bit of that deposit or slow your deposit down. I like to think of it as an insurance policy when we're working through and toning some of our blondes because blondes tend to be a little bit more porous in that situation. So we're gonna now move into the wet application. So this side of the mannequin head is damp. So we traditionally go through and tone on um, our blondes in the damp phase. All right, so what we're gonna do again is we're gonna get our application. This is our 10A, so I'm gonna start that. Oftentimes when I'm working through with the Demi, I find to expedite my application, I'm gonna come through and apply everything on the base or that regrowth area first. And then I can grab a few subsections at a time and saturate into those mids and ends. We also know the ends of the hair have been there the longest. So if I was to work this section and apply it scalp right into the ends right away, what could happen is those ends can really pick up that shade and that tone a lot faster than maybe I need that time to deposit here on that base. So my application will tell me where to start and that is the stronger hat is the stronger hair. Stronger hair is at that scalp area and then we'll bring it through onto those ends um, after we get everything onto that scalp and the base. Okay, Heather, so we have a question. Yes. 
So uh, Lori's asking, what about using purple shampoo on dry hair? Would it be more or less intense? That's a great question. You can certainly use the purple shampoo. If you're working that on dry hair, you may run into some challenges as far as coverage and saturation. We can see the viscosity here from our demi is a little bit more runny and loose than what a shampoo would be. Also, when you look at what a shampoo does, it cleanses the external surface. So you're really getting in with your purple shampoo, getting in cleansing, and it's a more of a semi-permanent end result than a toner would be. So you're just more longevity with your final result being that we have a demi-permanent that needs slight oxidation due to the processing liquid. So you can see here, now I've grabbed one, two, three subsections, and I'm working my product mids to ends. So I challenge you guys, try that application at that base, and then come through all the way into your subsection mids to ends and see how that application and process does for you. I find it just helps me cover more ground in a quicker amount of time. And that's exactly what we need to look to do when we are toning. How can we look at ways to expedite our application time so that toning process is nice and even all over? So we'll just take that 10A into that processing form right there. When we look at the two side by side, this one right here is onto that damp. And then the next one, it you can see was done on the dry hair. These are the same two formulas, 10A, the demi with processing liquid equal parts, applied on dry hair versus applied on wet hair. The true test is gonna come through the processing time of 20 minutes, so we'll allow that to go as we continue. Right behind the 10A, I'm coming through now with the 10PA, that is purple ash again. So a little more of that blue-violet base, controlled with the natural. So by having a little bit of that natural already embedded in for us, that's going to really give us a beautiful, smoky type of blonde. So working this through, again, we're just really celebrating the four different tonal series here. Um, some of my favorite go-to when I'm working through with the level 10s, more times than none, I love gravitating to the 10 BV. BV being that it's a blue-violet is really going to help to neutralize any of those yellow type of golds that happened to come peek through after a blonding or a lifting service. The PA series, I'll work through with if I have a little more stronger, orangier base in my blondes. I find of the two, BV versus PA, PA is going to be a little more aggressive into your uh, neutralization and toning processes. In uh, some cases, what I might do also is apply a 10 PA on the scalp and move into 10 BV on those ends where it could be a little more porous. So that's another great topic to discuss whenever we're toning blondes. It's not always just a one hit wonder or one flavor all over. Blondes have so many different variations. You could, variations. You could easily transition your blonde to being a dimensional blonde by going in and placing a few different tonal, uh, tonal bases within your toning options. Or if you ever had a blonde who just wanted to try a different shade or flavor of a blonde, what I'll do is I'll keep that, that nice level nine and then I'll throw some foils in dimensionally with my level tens so they could see a cooler ash base level 10 and then we can put a little bit more of like a smoky 10 PA in another foil near it so that they have a nice transition and different end result of dimensional blonde. So again, we're, this side, the focus and intention here is to show the toning done on damp hair. Damp hair, I think, is more of a um, universal way we go through and out of our blondes. However, one thing here with the demi is you're going to see a beautiful color deposit and transition. We must trust the process. Blondes do take some time to create, so as much as we 
And in that lifting process, the toning is where we put that cherry on top to really give them that best selection of blonde that they're looking for. So we've gotten our 10A, moving into our 10PA. Next, we're gonna see how our 10BV has this action on that damp hair. So working through, I'm gonna come in with the 10BV now. This is equal parts to the processing liquid. When we're done mixing, I'll also show um, each of the level 10 bottles to the crowd as well. So getting that on, working at that base area first. As I'm working through this, I'm really taking a look, making sure anything of saturation might be needed. Now, if you have a, a blonde you might be working with and they ha might have that um, natural color in between or maybe it's a deeper base in between their blonde height, that's what I love about the demi and working through in it only situation. This is only getting to a level 10. So you're not going to have any effect of if you have a level 5 or six in between your foils and you apply your 10 as a toner, this is only gonna affect hair that has been lightened to a level 10. Okay. So whenever looking into blondes, porosity is something you need to be aware of, right? And blondes have different porosity within the strand of hair. Oftentimes, up at the scalp, that hair tends to be a little stronger in integrity, meaning it hasn't been through so much thermal wear and tear. It hasn't been through so much environmental wear and tear. This is brand new hair. It's still fresh to everything. This hair has been exposed to everything under the sun. So that being a little bit more porous, why I'd come through and tone this uh, um, later stages of my application. Most toning situations would happen at the shampoo bowl or in the wash house. I, in fact, um, would recommend that anytime toning a blonde, you should do it away from the mirror. We know that some of our guests like to see what's happening, and if we were to have them in the mirror and we look through and watch, and they can see themselves process into tones like this, they're going to start freaking out and tell you, oh my gosh, I never wanted purple hair, or this is not the shade I'm going for. And then it's even harder on our end to let them know that things will be okay. So I completely eliminate that process by always working through my toning option into the wash house or a no mirror zone so that it just creates a seamless experience. We can do our, we can do our job with our profession that we know but if you have that situation where you might have to tone um, in front of the mirror, you know, the best thing is to educate your guest. Let them know why they're seeing a little bit more shades in the oxidation form. Remind them that as we're working through in the toning process, that this is a demi-permanent. Give them a little schooling. Let them know that demi-permanents only live on that outer surface of the cuticle and that hair structure, that this is not gonna live um, permanently internally into that cortex. So lastly, in this panel here, on the damp hair, we're gonna come through and apply our 10V. This is our violet base. So you can see our 10V has already start to process and oxidize here on the dry canvas of hair, where here we're applying on the wet canvas of hair. And we'll get to really see the difference of intensity when you have a little bit of water or moisture in the hair and how that slows down a little bit of that processing and oxidation during your deposit of its color. If I was working this formula all over um, one toner, all over my guest, what I would do is I would create four segments onto the head shape, and I would apply on scalp to mids area everywhere in one segment. Once I find that that's looking quite nice, then I will pull that in through the ends. Um, 
and then I'll, I'll evaluate how long that took me to apply. And if everything looked good, I can go through and apply on scalp everywhere and then come back through and pull mids to ends everywhere else. Also in toning situations, you definitely want to make sure you've pre-shampooed the hair and that all of the lightener is um, out so that you don't run into any mishaps or unpredictable end results with any of that lightener still living in that hair. Looks pretty wild when you see NVs looking like and the 10 uh, PA and the 10 A on that dry hair, but we're going to see that that leaves us a beautiful light end result. Oftentimes, I know when we start to see things like this, we get a little nervous. We think of that investment that guest has made in their blonde. And the last thing we want to do is spend more hours behind the chair trying to erase what has overly deposited, right? sure you with the demi in its level 10s, you won't necessarily run into that situation. They are very, very light, still sticking through in that soft, uh, translucinal realm. However, at a level 10, you can still see a beautiful shade and transition into the tonal series that you've chosen. And so now we'll just get that all into the ends of the hair. So we have toning 101, dry hair versus wet hair on the Intensely Cool series from the Demi. So let's recap exactly what our formulas are here. On the dry side, I chose to go through with the dry side first, really making sure we can put the, the product to the test and make sure that we are sticking true to that level and that tone. So right in front, you can see we have our 10A from the Demi. This is that ash base, that blue base, staying really nice and cool on this dry canvas. It does look a little deeper right now, but we'll see what that looks like right after she's been rinsed. Right here in the middle, this is the Demi 10PA. This is that Pearl Ash series right here. And you can see a little bit more of that um, type of shade peeking back through in the oxidation process. Again, dry hair is really going to allow that hair to really take in and grab onto the um, hair that's hair color that's being deposited in this situation. Right behind the 10 PA, we have our 10 BV. This is that blue violet base at a level 10. Oftentimes I find myself gravitating towards this shade whenever I'm working through with a beautiful blonde that has lifted that has just that little soft kiss of yellow or gold into that hair. When we think of gold, gold has a little peak of orange, right? So we need to be sure the blue isolates the orange and the violet will isolate and take care of that yellow. And lastly, right here into the back area on the dry hair, we have our 10V from the Demi. This is that violet base. So again, anything that's strongly yellow being featured here, you're going to want to work into your, your V as well. In some cases, you can certainly intermix your colors. A lot of times I like to customize and create my own blue violet base. And you can decide how much blue is needed or how much violet is needed when you need to customize for those different levels of blondes. So on this opposite side, we did the same application, however, on, dry, on wet hair. Again, wet hair is actually what we move and go towards when we're toning blondes. However, anytime you have water in the hair, that can also slow down your processing time and slow down the deposit that is done on the integrity of hair. I would highly recommend anytime you're working on over porous hair, extremely processed or damaged hair, using a little bit of water is going to be your friend in this situation to allow ease when applying. 
Um, if you needed to, you can absolutely apply on dry hair to that scalp area. A little awapui moisture mist into your ends will help even out and equalize the porosity. So when you apply your toner, it's going on a smooth canvas. I like to think of blonde hair almost like um, Swiss cheese, the cheese with all the little holes in it, right? And as you apply um, your certain shades and tones, sometimes those pigments can really uh, be aggressive and fill those in that cheese and then you get a little uneven toning in your blonde. So equalize the porosity with a little moisture mist or water and that will help to give you more of an even canvas when you apply into your blondes. So we'll let her process for 20 minutes with the demi and then we'll see the end result. And Heather, while you're going through toners, um, it's a big thing in the chat what you tone your hair with oh okay so. yes so with my hair um i have been using paul mitchell flashback or flash finish i'm sorry the flash finish series and what i use is equal parts of pale neutral with ultraviolet and five volume developer um, in some cases, when I have been out of the flash finish, I'll use the 10V with clear to go in and uh, tone my hair. My hair tends to lift pretty easy, so I just need the slightest little touch. Um, and sometimes I don't even need to tone, so it all depends on my appointment and schedule when I have to get my roots done. Um, so here is our end result onto our um, mannequin. When is the dry side that has been applied onto that mannequin. So what we see here, this is our 10A in that front area. And right behind it, there is that 10PA. So that 10A just gave you a nice, very, very clean blonde is what I like to call it. That ash base series, that blue base in the 10A is allowing you to wipe out any of those orangier, uh, goldier shades. But what I love to celebrate most is you're still living at that true level 10 and that bright blonde in this situation. Right the 10A, we went through with the 10PA, the pearl ash. So you can see here that it does give you a little bit more depth into your pen. You can see a little more of that smoky shade, what I mentioned with that pearl ash giving you that end result. Right behind the PA, we have our BV. This is our blue violet base. So that blue violet simply just comes through to neutralize any of that um, orange or that yellow fading through. You can see that the BV in this situation really gave us just a neutral end result. It's not too cold and it's not too warm. So your BV is gonna give you more of those neutral blondes. And then lastly, right in this back area, take note right here into um, this side being the 10V. This is our 10V violet base. Right next to it though, right in the back, you can see the variation of your 10V with no water versus 10V with water as far as a toner. So they're very, very um, soft in difference. However, how you would determine when using your 10V on dry or damp hair is definitely porosity. On dry hair, you're gonna pick up a little bit more of the stronger tonality to the 10V. On the damp hair, you're gonna pick up a very, very soft deposit of that 10V, helping to keep it just a cool blonde. Now when we transition into what we did on the damp side, you can see it's more of a whisper of deposit. I would look at the side we did with no as a nice talk when you're looking at those different shades of the intensely cools and then when you see when we went through and applied it on the damp pair this is more of a whisper of deposit same situation we have our 10a right through that front and then moving into that 10bv so more of I'm sorry, we had the 10 PA right next to it, more of that smokier base. But you can see it's not as intense being that that water really gave us more of a buffer when we're looking at that deposit. Right behind that, we come into our 10 BV, that blue violet base. So again, in this case, uh, seeing our mannequin start off a little bit more yellow orange, that BV is just giving us that nice neutral sandy type of blonde and then lastly that 10v 
right through this back area on damp hair is giving us just the slightest kiss of, of violet leading us into the cooler realm of a blonde. So um, I would like to bring my girl processing up because I think the biggest thing to talk about and sit, see is whenever we're working with the demi and we see hair processing in that, in that shampoo bowl or that toner, what we need to be sure and do is trust the process, right? We can see here if we were in the shampoo bowl and watching our blondes, we're going to feel a little intimidated or almost like we have to go through and do a bunch of clarifying. That's not quite the case. Um, this mannequin, what I pre-done for us tonight, I actually let her process for a good 40 minutes. And even after 40 minutes of processing and shampooing, conditioning and drying, I'm more than to celebrate with you guys that you're going to be okay. Allow the product to do its job. When you enjoy that 20 minute processing time, you're also going to get more longevity in the shade and tone. The Demi does have a longevity of anywhere from four to six weeks. Now how this would be um, altered is definitely porosity of hair and also how often and frequent shampooing their hair, using their thermal iron blow dryer, and making sure they're set up with the appropriate products for them to take home and maintain this, this color. So in some cases, we always hear our blondes talking about gold is coming back, or they feel like their hair is brassy, or it's not as bright and white as when they left the salon. So what I would recommend to do with any of your blondes is send them home with the appropriate take-home items that they need to invest in to take care of the initial color investment that happened right here. And that's where I'm going to introduce to you for our blondes as a beautiful color craft situation. Color craft is Paul Mitchell's Customize color treatment. So when you look at color craft here, it is offered in several different shades and um, options. What I have here is a pre-done mannequin, this beautiful, beautiful hand-painted, um, nicely highlighted mannequin. You can see she has a nice dark base and we went in and had some lightener placed in, bringing it from a medium blonde into a brighter blonde. These are the situations a lot of our guests come in with, noticing that it looks a little brassy, it's not as white. So what I'll do with my guest after we've gone through this service, I'll customize a color treatment for them to take home and use as a conditioner whenever they feel they see that warmth, that gold or that brass come back through. They'll condition their hair with this and that's gonna help to soften out those warmer shades, neutralize them and leave them into that icier, wider blonde. So let's go through and craft up how we would customize a color treatment for one of our blonde guests. The color craft you can see here is a nice white base conditioner. It's extremely hydrating. I myself tried this conditioner out simply with no pigment to go through and just see how much luscious, great hydration I can feel back to my hair. And it has really saved the integrity of my hair. Another great celebration I'd like to talk to you guys about is I actually customized my own color craft into a beautiful salmon-y coral color. And I saturated color craft on top of my own blonde hair. And I allowed about a month to go through of just my normal wear and tear. I washed my hair twice, maybe three times a week. Um, I continued to use my color craft as a maintenance upkeep to refresh that coral. And after about four or five weeks, that color slowly started to dissipate and get lighter and lighter, cotton candy, pink, more pastel. And my blonde was back to a beautiful blonde. I had no color correction, no color balance, or any type of re-lightening to get rid of that. That is why I love the co color craft to go through and either test shades out, to go through and maintain any of the colors that you love to see in your hair. Um, but you can also get just the softest deposit. Think of it, it's a color conditioner. What do we know conditioners do? They hydrate, strengthen, and repair the hair. Let's think more about even where conditioner lives on the hair. It's that outermost surface. So it's a non-committal hair color that's really intended to refresh, revive, and revamp your hair color. So let's get in for our blondes. For our blondes, 
going to come through and do, again, the goal would be to neutralize or take away any of the warm gold shades that are coming through on our guest. So I'm going to start off here with our Misty Violet. Misty Violet has a very soft, soft violet base. Let's think of the word mist, right? Mist as a very wide distribution of water. So this is going to be a very soft distribution of violet. Whenever you're formulating for color craft for your guests to take home, there's two situations you can formulate. Light would be anything from level 8, 9, or 10, and moderate would be thing at a level five, six, or seven. Oftentimes in levels threes and fours or twos, threes and fours, you're not really experiencing a lot of color fadage being pigment is so strong at those levels. So the take home recommendation in color craft, you would only offer your guest this situation in a light or a moderate deposit. Being that we're discussing blondes, we're gonna formulate color craft in the light moderation. Light, when you're working with your conditioner in its jar at 200 milliliters of conditioner, you can use anywhere from 10 to 16 pumps of your liquid color concentrate. 10 pumps would leave you more at a level 10, where 16 pumps would leave you more at a level 8. Now guys, these are simply guidelines. The brains are in you not within the bottle. So as you know, a guideline is 10 to 16 pumps. You're the creator. If you find you need to have eight pumps because this hair is a little more porous, that's absolutely acceptable. After 16 pumps, if you're finding that amount of pigment, pigment is not giving you enough neutralization, you're more than welcome to add a few more pumps of that appropriate shade to get you the end result. So I'm going to start off with the guideline, we'll evaluate it and see what it looks like, and then we'll take it from there to establish if we need a little more of this or a little more of that. So Misty Violet is going to be our base. I'm going to start off with seven pumps of Misty Violet within our and then I'm going to beef it up with a little more customized violet of our lapis and our paprika. We know blue and red make violet, but being that blue and red are the strongest primary colors, I'm really going to use the most minimal amount of those. The base of my color is really going to be the hero of our misty violet. So seven pumps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll work that through. I'm going to actually show you guys what this looks like before we add in lapis and we add in the paprika. So you can see with the white base conditioner, it's really taking in that nice, beautiful, misty violet shade. Really get in there and get all that conditioner through. Also, a few general guidelines to keep in mind. The more pigment you use, the deeper it's going to get. The less pigment you use, the lighter it's going to deposit. Conditioner only lives on that outer surface of the hair. So this is a temporary color adjustment whenever you're through to revamp or refresh in your color. Oftentimes, I let my guests know that they definitely want to use this before any of their holiday events or um, working into any special type of events that they might just want a quick fix. They can do this at home in their shower and they can refresh their color at any time they see fit. So this is a very, very soft light deposit. In fact, this in some cases, like coarser fabrics of hair or um, stronger integrities, this might not be enough pigment to give you that um, separation of warmth that you're looking for. So to enhance your misty violet, go through and add a small portion of your lapis and your paprika. And this is your red base and your blue base. They just have really fun call names to them. So with the red base, I'm going to come through, and I'm just going to work barely one pump. I'm not going to call it a half a pump or a quarter of a pump, but I don't want to get too strong in that red. Keep in mind, we're really looking for this to deposit on our blonde, which is a level 8 or 9 or 10. So I'm going to give a little bit of that red. And then we'll come through, same thing, with our lapis, our blue base, and we'll give a little bit of that blue. 
And now we'll come through and customize to create our own flavor and version of that misty violet, that violet base conditioner. And again, your guest simply wants to use this when see any of those strong, warm yellow shades coming back. Why I really love the color craft, especially in the blonding world, is first off the hydration the, the conditioner gives to the hair, really allowing that hair to feel soft, um, restructured, but I can customize how much violet my guest really some blondes don't really even fade yellow. They fade more orange, right? So what that tells me is maybe you do misty violet with only lapis. But for deeper blondes, maybe level eights who are um, a lot stronger in those warmer shades, misty violet might not be enough pigment for you to come through and give that neutralization. So you can see still we're working in a very light, light um, color conditioner as far as the violet goes, but the misty violet enhanced with your lapis and your paprika. So if S was at home, what she would do is shampoo her hair. In, in the shower, she's going to use the amount of conditioner she normally would, and she's going to her hair on mid shaft to ends to neutralize any of that warmth or apply it to wherever she's seeing that warmth. If you have a guest who is um, finding that, that that warmth comes back um, a lot more often or it comes back a little bit more strong, you could also recommend for your guests to apply this on their dry hair prior to getting in the shower. Again, it's the same concept of the water. A little bit of water could slow down a little bit of that deposit. So if you need a little bit more integrity from the product, absolutely applying onto the dry hair would be acceptable. So as we spoke with our girl before, this was that starting level of that canvas of blonde. You can really see more of those goldy pieces, those yellow pieces pop back through. We went through on the other side, we shampooed her, and we color crafted her with this same um, application and process of the um, conditioner. But now you can see just more of those wider, beigeier, cooler blondes that have been applied with your color craft. So when you look at the two sides right here, this is a guest who maybe has been out of the salon, their toner has faded quite a bit, and now they can refreshen and reuse the color craft at home in their own time to really give that blonde the life and the coolness that it's looking for. So again, when we look at the options to give our guests when we're working in the salon and isolating the perfect type of blonde to give them, it's not about only what we're doing behind the chair and what they're investing in and those few hours with us in the salon. A lot of what it takes is how the guest is maintaining and bringing their hair back to life at home. Whether it be the shampoo that helps to give you that gentle keeping a strong integrity, um, the conditioner, this wouldn't be your daily conditioner either, the color craft. You're gonna still use your protonizing conditioners, your hydrating conditioners. Color craft is gonna be your conditioner whenever you see a little bit more gold peek back through, a little bit more brass peek back through on your blonde, and that's really gonna help keep what they invested in from day one in the salon with you to the expectation that they're looking for. So color craft again, it's not only for blondes. You can certainly customize and create your color craft with certain brown shades. This is our cacao. This is our cooler brown. I love cacao mixed in with a little bit of lapis too. In fact, when you would reach for a cooler brown, oftentimes hair might be fading red. So you may have to customize with a yellow and a blue into your cacao. So we know yellow and blue makes green and green eliminates red. So you can customize when you're working through with your guests on all different variations and shades um, to help them achieve the appropriate color that they're looking for. Not only at home can color craft be an option for your guests to use, but you can simply use this as an upgraded service in the salon as a top coat conditioning treatment enhanced with a little bit of pigment. I've started introducing this to my guests in the salon who have appointments only for haircuts. I have to shampoo and condition their hair anyway, so I've upgraded them into a beautiful conditioning treatment crafted to just 
enhance what they've naturally got. And it slowly invited them into the world of color, which now they're not intimidated from. Um, another great way you can really cut back time on your color corrections with Colorcraft would be for repigmentation. That's right, you can absolutely use your liquid color concentrates, of course, your warmer shades to repigment that hair. You would use three ounces of water with your shade of warmth, a few pumps in that, and you're gonna spritz that onto any of that blonde hair, wait five minutes, and then you would apply your target formula on top of that to give you that repigmentation experience by cutting your service time down in half. So you have a few options to use Colorcraft as far as service revenue opportunities. More importantly, really celebrate the fact that your guests can invest in something to protect color fadage by using Colorcraft at home in their own shower to freshen up the hair color you provided for them in the salon. Excellent. Do we have any more questions rolling through? So I saw one more. They were asking when you put it on dry, if you put it on dry hair, how long would you leave it? Excellent question. When you're working through with color craft, when you put it on dry hair, think of it like this. It's pretty much direct. It's going right onto that cuticle and soaking it in. I would evaluate your processing time by how much time you have on your books. In our documentation and brochure, what you're gonna read is it can process anywhere from five to 10 to 15 minutes. You can absolutely have sit under the hood dryer also to drive that heat and just a little deeper in through the cuticle. However, if I had to squeeze in maybe a haircut, a male haircut or something in between my treatment, by allowing my guests to sit for 20, 25 or 30 minutes, I'm still gonna have the beautiful expected end result of the formula that I created. So it's not going deeper as longer. It's only a direct uh, type of deposit living on surface of the cuticle. So recommended to process anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes. However, you are the brains. So based upon your appointment book and fit in other services, you can allow a little bit more stretch with time or shorten that time if you need to see that happen that way as well. All right. So it, it's just a lot of compliments in the chat room. So thank you. I think you answered everybody's questions. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Well, my name's Heather Cottonoy. You can follow me at H underscore Cottonoy on Instagram. Please DM me if you have any questions at all in the color world, style world, or cutting world. I'm more than happy to get through with you guys. Um, enjoy the new Intensely Cools from Paul Mitchell, the Demi. And please help your guests stay protected with their color investment by working through color craft into that service. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Enjoy your night.